welcome to Millennium News TV 24-7 Global News Update. My name is Todd Goldfinger, and here are today's top headlines. Thank you for being with us. California's first in the nation task force on reparations for African Americans will release a report Wednesday documenting in detail the harms perpetuated by the state and recommending steps to address those wrongs, including expanded voter registration, making it easier to hold violent police accountable and improving black neighborhoods. It also recommends the creation of a special office that would in part help African Americans descended from free or enslaved black people in the country at the end of the 19th century, document their eligibility for financial restitution. The report, which runs 500 pages, will be the first government commission study on harms against the African American community since 1968 Kerner Commission report ordered by then President Lyndon Johnson. Task Force Chair Camilla Moore said. Next news. An exterior door at Robb Elementary School did not lock when it was closed by a teacher shortly before a gunman used it to get inside and kill 19 students and two teachers, leaving investigators searching to determine why. State police said Tuesday. State police initially said a teacher had propped the door open shortly before Salvador Ramos, 18, entered the school in Uvalde, Texas, on May 24, 2022. They have now determined that the teacher, who has not been identified, propped the door open with a rock, but then removed the rock and closed the door when she realized there was a shooter on campus, said Travis Considine, chief communications officer for the Texas Department of Public Safety. But Considine said, the door that was designed to lock when shut did not lock. Next news. The pallbearers wore white shirts and gloves. The desert brown church with the tall bell towers was filled to overflowing. The casket held a 10-year-old girl who loved the color purple. On Tuesday afternoon, hundreds of mourners turned out for the funeral mass for Amory Jo Garza, a smiling fourth grader who was killed a week ago when 18-year-old Salvador Ramos stormed into her Uvalde, Texas elementary school and opened fire on her classroom. Amory's funeral was the first since the massacre, with Mati Rodriguez is scheduled for later Tuesday at an Uvalde funeral home. 19 more funerals are planned for the next two and a half weeks for the 19 children and two teachers who were killed in that classroom on May 24th, 2022. Next news, 
Special prosecutors were expected to announce Wednesday whether they'll file charges against a Wisconsin sheriff's deputy who killed a man in a park six years ago when he was a suburban Milwaukee police officer. Joseph Menza had said Jay Anderson Jr. was reaching for a gun when he shot and killed him after finding Anderson sleeping in a park after hours in June 2016. Anderson was one of three people Menza killed during a five-year stint at the Wauwatosa Police Department. Menza resigned from the Wauwatosa Department in November 2020 and joined the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department. We're going to take a short break from the Daily Global English News of Millennium News TV 24-7. Please stay with us. Thank you. to Millennium News TV 24-7 Global News Update. Here's the continuation of today's top stories. Thank you for being with us. The FBI thwarted a planned cyber attack on a children's hospital in Boston that was to have been carried out by hackers sponsored by the Iranian government. FBI Director Christopher Wray said Wednesday, Wray told a Boston College cybersecurity conference that his agents learned of the planned digital attack from an unspecified intelligence partner and got Boston Children's Hospital the information it needed last summer to block what would have been, in quotes, one of the most despicable, sorry, I lost my, despicable cyber attacks I've seen, in quotes, and quick actions by everyone involved, especially at the hospital, protected both the network and the sick children who depended on it, end quotes. Ray said, next news. The Biden administration said it will send Ukraine a small number of high-tech, medium-range rocket systems, a critical weapon that Ukrainian leaders have been begging for as they struggle to stall Russian progress in the Donbass region. The rocket systems are part of a new 700 million tranche of security assistance for Ukraine from the U.S. that will include helicopters, javelin anti-tank weapon systems, tactical vehicles, spare parts, and more, two senior administration officials said Tuesday. The officials spoke on the condition of anonymity to preview the weapons package that will be formally unveiled on Wednesday. Next news. Next news. 
Next news. A lawyer for Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign was acquitted Tuesday of lying to the FBI when he pushed information meant to cast suspicions on Donald J. Trump and Russia in the run-up to that year's election. The case against Michael Sussman was the first courtroom test of special counsel John Durham since his appointment three years ago to search for government misconduct during the investigation into potential ties between Russia and Trump's 2016 campaign. The verdict marks a clear setback for Durham's work, especially since Donald Trump's supporters have looked to the probe to expose what they contend was egregious bias by law enforcement officials who investigated the ex-president's campaign. The outcome is likely to hasten questions about the purpose of the inquiry and its cost to taxpayers. Next news. Kathleen Bula, the ex-wife of President John, oh, sorry, Joe Biden's son, Hunter, says he, she has, in quotes, total control over my life now, five years after her divorce, as she opens up about her marriage in a new memoir. Bule describes her ex-husband's drug addiction. Her response to his infidelity, including an affair with her widowed sister-in-law, and her challenges integrating into the Biden family. Excerpts of if We Break, were published Wednesday by People magazine. In the book, Bulle describes the pain she felt watching Hunter spiral into addiction, even as he denied it, and how it became my own addiction to document it. She writes that the couple separated not long after Bo Biden's two O fifteen death from brain cancer when Bula found a crack pipe in their ashtray. Oh well. We're gonna take a short break from the Daily Global English News of Millennium News TV 24-7. Please stay with us. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Millennium News TV 24-7 Global News Update. Thank you so much for being with us. Here is the continuation of today's top stories. Thanks. Western nations promised more and more advanced arms to bolster Ukraine's defense as it, uh, sorry, as its troops battled, this is, this is not fun, as its troops battled a grinding Russian offensive that was closing in on a Capturing, capturing a key city in the east. Germany said Wednesday it will supply Ukraine with modern anti-aircraft missiles and radar systems. And the U.S. will unveil a new weapons package later in the day that will include high-tech, medium-range rocket systems. 
The Kremlin spokesman told reporters Wednesday that the U.S. is, in quotes, pouring fuel on the fire, end quotes. Western arms have been critical to Ukraine's success in stymieing Russia's much, much larger and better equipped military, thwarting, thwarting its initial efforts to take the capital and forcing Moscow to shift its focus instead to uh, the eastern industrial Donbass region. Next news. The death toll in a catastrophic collapse of a tower in southeastern Iran rose to 37 on Wednesday, officials said, as emergency workers pulled another body from the rubble over a week after the disaster that has prompted an outpouring of outrage and grief in the country. Rescuers continued sifting through the ruins of the Metropole building in Abadan, some 660 kilometers, that's 410 miles southwest of the capital, Tehran. The governor of the Khuzestan province, Sadeh Kalilan, told State TV that he expects rescuers to find more bodies based on the number of families still waiting in limbo for word from their loved ones. It's unclear how many people remain unaccounted for. Next news. Russian forces in a frenzied push have seized half of Sieverodovnensk, the eastern Ukrainian city that is key to Moscow's efforts to complete the capture of the industrial Donbass region the mayor said Tuesday. In quotes, the city is essentially being destroyed ruthlessly block by block, end quotes. Alexander Striuk said. He said heavy street fighting continued and artillery barrages threatened the lives of the estimated 13,000 civilians still sheltering in the ruined city that once was home to more than 100,000 people. A Russian airstrike on Sieverodonetsk hit a tank of nitric acid at a chemical factory, causing a huge leak of fumes, according to Sirihi Khaide. Next news. As health authorities in Europe and elsewhere roll out vaccines and drugs to stamp out the biggest monkeypox outbreak beyond Africa, sim some doctors acknowledge an ugly reality. The resources to slow the diseases, sorry, the diseases spread have long been available, just not to the Africans who have dealt with it for decades. Countries including Britain, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Switzerland, and the United States, Israel, and Australia have reported more than 250 monkeypox cases. Many apparently tried to, oh, sorry, tied to sexual activity at two recent raves in Europe. No deaths have been reported. Authorities in numerous European countries and the U.S. are offering to immunize people and considering the use of antivirals. On Thursday, the World Health Organization will convene, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, sorry, a special meeting to discuss monkeypox research priorities and related issues. We're going to take a short break from the Daily Global English News of Millennium News TV 24-7. Please stay with us. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Hello and welcome back to Millennium News TV 24-7 Global News Update. Here's the continuation of today's top stories. Thank you so much for being with us. No one knows that better than Queen Elizabeth II, who's showing no signs of stepping aside after 70 years on the throne. But the aging sovereign is giving Prince Charles an increasingly prominent role, delegating more responsibilities to her eldest son and heir. That became obvious last month when Charles, 73, accompanied by his wife, Camilla, presided over the state opening of Parliament, one of the monarch's most important duties. The subtle transition illustrates the challenges confronting the royal family as the 96-year-old queen remains on the throne, but Charles becomes the ever more public face of the monarchy. Isn't that special? Next news. <laughs> You're going to love this. Bill Cosby will again be facing sexual abuse allegations Wednesday as attorneys give opening statements in a civil trial that's one of the last remaining legal claims against the comedian. Lawyers for the 64-year-old Judy Huth will outline the evidence they plan to present that Cosby faced her to perform a sexual act at the Playboy Mansion, 1975, when she was, oh, well, okay, when, when she was 16 years old. The case will hinge on the testimony of Huth, bolstered by photos and other archival exhibits, exhibits to place the incident in time. Cosby's attorneys who say no sexual abuse happened are likely to emphasize that the burden of proving the nearly 50 year old case lies entirely with the plaintiffs. They have acknowledged that Cosby took Huth to the Playboy Mansion as a photo from the visit shows, but as they believe she was not a minor when that happened. Next news, Rafael Nadal insists he can't know for sure whether any match at Roland Garros might be his very last at a place he loves, a place he is loved. For now, if he keeps winning and keeps performing the way he did during his monumental quarterfinal victory over longtime rival Novak Djokovic, Djokovic, that began in May and ended in June. Nadal will have more chances to play with a mix of brilliant shot making and his trademark resilience. Nadal got past the top seeding defending French Open champion Djokovic, 6-2, 4-6, to 6-2, 7-6, 4, to move a step closer to his 14th championship at the Clay Court Grand Slam tournament and what would be a, sec oh, sorry, 22nd major trophy overall, adding to records that he already owns. Next news. In a frenetic game that featured 14 goals, Colorado and Edmonton players came away with the same thought. Defense can't be so optional. JT Comfer scored twice. Kale McCarr had a goal and two assists, and the Avalanche held off the Oilers 8-6 to six on Tuesday night in a fast-paced, no-lead-felt-safe game, one of the Western Conference Final. The goal after goal after goal routine had Hall of Famer Wayne Gretzky, the greatest scorer of all time, pleading on the TV broadcast for a little more D, whatever that means. The game is tied for 10th 
highest scoring playoff game in NHL's history, according to the league. In quotes, there's a lot, there's lots to clean up, said Comfer, whose team matched a franchise record for most goals in a playoff game. In quotes, we don't want to play the game that we played tonight. We want to be tighter defensively, end quotes. Thank you for watching the Daily Global English News Update of Millennium News TV 24-7. We love you. We thank you. We wish you the best. Log in to get the latest news on all of our social networking sites. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. On TikTok, we are Millennium News 24. Oh, also, our YouTube channel is News Channel and 24. Viewers, now on both network broadcasting, Android and iOS devices, Apple TV, Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, also all smart TV platforms, please enjoy our entertainment and our latest news and views and editorials, our programs, our programming, you got to watch it. Our Millennium TV apps, Millennium TV USA, Android, Millennium News, Google, Google us, MillenniumTV24.com. It's easy. Stay with Millennium News 24. Thank you. God bless you all. We love you. Peace. Thank you.